from marriages to plastic surgery to faking an accent. Here's our list of the insane times celebrities got busted for lying in interviews. Now starting off we have Kylie Jenner's lips. Back in 2015 Kylie Jenner was accused of getting lip fillers. Now her and her family always denied it and she even once tweeted in a since deleted tweet, these plastic surgery rumors hurt my feelings to be honest and are kinda insulting. Then when Remix magazine asked Kylie for the secret behind her beautiful lips, she said everyone thinks I use like one certain color, I use like six different colors all the time, but that was a lie. On an episode of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, she revealed what was actually going through her head during that interview. She explained, I have temporary lip fillers, it's just an insecurity of mine and that's what I wanted to do. I'm just not ready to talk to reporters about my lips yet because everyone always picks us apart. Now on a later episode of Life of Kylie, she further explained that her insecurity began when the first boy she kissed told her, I didn't think you were going to be a good kisser because you have such small lips. Now she said, when a guy you like says that, that, I don't know, it just really affected me. So yes, people were right, they were not natural, it wasn't a makeup trick, it was fillers. Then there's Lindsay Lohan's community service. From the years 2007 to 2012, Lindsay Lohan got in trouble with the law a lot. She has had many DUIs and one time as part of her sentence, a judge ordered Lindsay to spend time working in the LA County morgue, hoping it would give her insight into the harsh consequences of drinking and driving. Now this sounds like a great idea. Idea, seeing what happens firsthand, and it's not like she was doing intense work either. She just had to perform janitorial duties at the morgue twice a week while free on bail. Now she completed this, but later when doing an interview, she said it was effed up and inappropriate because a lot of the other people were meant to do it, and they were like, no, they can't handle it. Lohan can. It's different for me than it would be for other people. Like no one would really have to work in the morgue in LA and roll a body bag for Whitney Houston. Yeah, you heard that. Right, she said she rolled a body bag for the Whitney Houston. Now, this raised some eyebrows, and an official from the coroner's office denied her claims, telling TMZ though Lindsay was serving her hours at the time of Whitney's death, no one from the court ordered probation program she was a part of ever came in contact with the late singer. Now, why Lindsay would lie about this? Who knows, probably for attention, but it's honestly just a horrible thing to lie about. Moving on to Brandy's marriage. During a 2002 appearance on the Oprah Winfrey show, Brandy, who was six months pregnant at the time, claimed that she'd recently gotten married. But when she visited Oprah again in 2014, she admitted that she was never actually legally married to her child's father, but she lied because she was worried about being judged and felt like having a child out of wedlock would ruin her career. She said, at the time, being pregnant out of wedlock was not a trend, it was not something that people praised. It was a sin, and I felt like I could not be honest about that. I felt the pressure of having to be perfect. I thought that everything that I had worked for was threatened. Now we have Robert Pattinson's circus story. Now Robert Pattinson is an interesting person to say the least. While promoting water for elephants, Robert told today, the first time I went to a circus, somebody died, one of the clowns died, its little car exploded. He continued, everybody ran out, it was terrifying. Now that just sounds disturbing, but a week later while he was doing press in Germany, a reporter asked him about the clown story. He admitted, I said those things but I actually made the whole thing up. He continued, it's coming back to haunt me, I said it on some show, it was really early in the morning, the day after the New York premiere. Someone asked me what my experience with the circus was like, and I was like, I have nothing interesting to say, I don't know why I said that. But that's not the only time he's lied. Oh no. In 2009, Robert told Extra that he doesn't really see the point in washing your hair. So I guess if you hear that Robert said something, take whatever he said with a grain of salt. And finally we have Hilaria Baldwin. After becoming famous when she married the actor Alec Baldwin in 2012, Hilaria Baldwin established herself as a lifestyle guru. A big part of her story was that she was of Spanish heritage, and she was even featured on a list of Latina stars. According to Insider, Hilaria even claimed to have been born in Spain, including it on her official talent agency profile for AA, just 
despite having been born in Boston. Now in 2020, people started to bust holes in the various stories she had told, including one that suggested she moved to the United States from Spain at age 19 to go to NYU. Now per page 6, Hilaria went to school in Weston, Massachusetts, which is crazy considering she spoke with a Spanish accent, which was ultimately revealed to be fake. Well, that's all for our list of the insane times celebrities got busted for lying in interviews. When will celebrities learn just to tell the truth? I mean, honesty is the best policy. Starting us off at number 10, we have controlling Ben Affleck. One rumor Jennifer would definitely try to hide is how controlling she's been rumored to be. Several sources have spoken up about the state of Jennifer and Ben Affleck's marriage, mentioning numerous things that annoy her about him. According to an insider, one significant issue for Jen is Ben's smoking habit, which has been a long-standing behavior of his. The insider shared he promised to give it up but with all her nagging, he's smoking more than ever. In addition to his smoking habit, it seems Ben might have a cleanliness problem as well. The source shared, Ben doesn't clean up after himself, which irritates Jennifer. The source also criticized Jennifer's approach to nagging her husband, saying she's been known to yell at him and point her finger. It makes people wonder if she mistakes him for a dog. Moreover, Jennifer didn't hold back in an interview when she suggested that Ben had no fashion sense. Recounting a conversation with him, she stated, I did kind of like say, you need to be, you know, you're a movie star. You should wear a suit, you know? You should do this with your hair. Going on to say, he didn't do anything he didn't want to do. He had some good fashion moments when he was with me. At number nine, we have the Botox accusations. Despite Jennifer's denial, numerous dermatologists claim that she has had Botox done in the past. Following the launch of her skincare brand, JLo Beauty, Jennifer faced significant backlash. She attributed her ageless appearance to her skincare products, but many fans remained skeptical. And in a makeup free selfie she shared, her skin appeared unusually flawless, raising suspicions. Jennifer has previously stated, I haven't had Botox to this day, I'm not that person, asserting that olive oil, not cosmetic procedures, was her secret. Dermatologist Corey Hartman challenged her claim on Instagram, suggesting that Jennifer might be conveniently forgetting any previous Botox treatments and emphasized that olive oil alone couldn't produce her results. Quote, I think Jennifer is probably forgetting if she's ever had Botox, but I know for sure that she's used more than olive oil to maintain that glow. In response, Jennifer defended her practices in an interview, doubling down that her approach works, saying, I'm telling you what I do works. Please don't call me a liar. I don't lie about things. I've been pretty honest about my whole life. She also engaged with fans on Instagram, denying accusations of Botox use. However, many people agree that achieving her youthful look solely through olive oil would be impossible given her age. At number 8, we have Interview with Movie Line. Was she using this interview as an opportunity to criticize her fellow women in the industry, or was she genuinely just expressing her admiration for them? JLo's 1998 Movie Line interview has gained notoriety due to her interesting critiques of other women in the industry. One of the targets of her criticism was Madonna and her acting skills. When asked about Madonna, she supposedly responded by saying, Do I think she's a great performer? Yeah. Do I think she's a great actress? No. Acting is what I do, so I'm harder on people when they say, Oh, I can do that, I can act. I'm like, hey, don't spit on my craft. Gwyneth Paltrow was another person JLo targeted in this interview. When asked about Gwyneth, JLo replied, I swear to God, I don't remember anything she was in. Some people get hot by association. She further commented, I heard more about her and Brad Pitt than I ever heard about her work. Cameron Diaz was the next subject of JLo's harsh remarks. When discussing Cameron, she said, A lucky model who's been given a lot of opportunities, I just wish she would have done more with. She also somewhat dismissed the actress by adding, She's beautiful and has a great presence though, and in my best friend's wedding, I thought, when directed, she can be good. 20 years later, when asked about this interview, she admitted knowing that it had upset some people. She explained, I was still in that kind of fan mentality back in the Bronx. And then you go, oh, wait a minute, you have a responsibility to present yourself in the way that you are and not let people interpret it in a way that could be that you're this hurtful, callous person. And number seven is the makeup artist banishment. This situation is a prime example of JLo believing a complete lie and then running with it. 
Back in the mid 2000s, she went after her longtime makeup artist, Scott Barnes, like nobody's business. Why? Well, there were rumors floating around that someone in her inner circle spilled the beans about her secret writing to Mark Anthony. And let me tell you, Jen was not happy about it. Scott spilled the tea during an interview, revealing that he was practically banished by JLo for a whole year, even though it turned out someone else leaked the info. He said at the time, it was like I had the plague. But here's the kicker, even after they started working together again, Jen never bothered to apologize. They just swept it under the rug like it never happened. He said, I went back to work with her and we just never spoke about it again. Talk about weird. And number six is the relationship with Ben's ex. How are JLo and Ben's ex-wife Jennifer Garner getting along? While both parties may claim that there's no beef, the reality might be a bit more complicated. While one source suggested that the two have developed a friendship, other insiders' accounts seem to contradict this. During an interview, Garner revealed her deliberate efforts to avoid any news about herself or her ex-husband. She said, I work hard not to see either of us in the press. It doesn't make me feel good, even if it's something nice about one of us. She went on to add, I don't need to see anyone in my family made into a meme. When asked if she had seen the Ben memes, she replied saying no, but acknowledged that he tends to attract meme-worthy attraction. These comments didn't sit well with JLo, according to an insider who shared, it's Jennifer's way of saying Ben looks miserable and all his appearances in public are lame. How could JLo not take it personally? The source further disclosed JLo's feelings, noting that while part of her may want to respond and confront Garner, she's smart enough not to make a public scene. So it seems that Ben will play the role of mediator between the two and that Jennifer Garner holds strong opinions about JLo that she prefers to keep away from the public eye. And number five is trouble in Benifer Paradise. Is JLo being less than truthful about the realities of married life? When she and Ben first got together, insiders revealed that Jennifer was over the moon. But now it seems like she's come crashing back down to reality. Multiple sources have chimed in, claiming that the honeymoon phase has faded since they settled into their LA home. According to one source, they're back to the grind of work and parenting reality has set in. That's not all though. The same source spilled the tea that Ben stormed out of the house recently after a heated argument. Allegedly, the couple has been at each other's throats nonstop since tying the knot. Another insider shared, before the wedding, Jennifer put on an Oscar-worthy performance for Ben, pretending to be the secret, easy-going wife-to-be, claiming Ben was blinded by love and just didn't really know what he was getting into. Now we've seen them at events where they appear to be in the midst of a tiff, but could those moments have been taken out of context, or is there some truth to what these sources are dishing out? And number four, we have the Selena film. It looks like Jen can't handle media attention and critics as well as she'd like us to believe. Back in 1997, she got pretty riled up over a journalist's criticism of her role in Selena. While lots of people loved the movie and Jen's performance, the particular journalist didn't feel the same way. They wrote, the one thing you don't do when you walk out of this movie is say, who's that girl? Later in an interview, Jennifer later addressed this saying, there are certain people marked for death already. I have my little list of journalists that have treated me unfairly. But the drama didn't stop there, and it seems she couldn't let this critique go. In an interview with the Animated Times, she revealed, I was totally happy with my work on Selena, but out of the 700 reviews, I can quote the one who said the one thing you don't do when you walk out of this movie is say, who's that girl? Going on to say, when another person from the same magazine came up to me, the first thing I said to her was, you tell that other B that writes for your magazine that I'm never talking to her again. So note to self, don't write a bad view about JLo unless you want her to hold a grudge forever. Next at number three, we have her feud with Mariah Carey. Everyone and their cousin knows about the long-standing rumor that Mariah Carey is JLo's ultimate arch nemesis, and let me tell you, some of the reported incidents make it seem like there might be some truth to it. This feud goes way back to the 90s, and despite their denials of any bad blood, it's pretty clear that something isn't right between them. So here's the scoop. Apparently, it all started because of Mariah's ex-husband, Tommy. In her 2020 memoir, The Meaning of Mariah Carey, she spilled the tea about working on her single, Lover boy and using a sample from a Yellow Magic Orchestra song. But here's the kicker, her ex Tommy, who was the big shot at Sony Music, seemed a tad bitter about the divorce and decided to play dirty. 
Mariah spilled the beans in her memoir saying, after hearing my new song using the same sample I used, Sony rushed to make a single for another female entertainer on their label. Now Mariah never explicitly mentioned JLo by name, but it wasn't rocket science to figure out who she was talking about, and things only went downhill from there. In a 2002 interview, Mariah threw some serious shade JLo's way. When asked about their feud, she coolly replied, There are rivalries, but I don't think she has anything to do with me. My whole thing is singing, writing songs, I've been doing this my whole life. Singing is first and foremost. It's a God-given talent that I'm grateful for. Her thing is something different. Then during an appearance on Watch What Happens Live, JLo finally gave her side of the story. When asked about Mariah, she shot back saying, I don't have a feud against her at all. I know from back in the day, I've read things that she said about me that were not the greatest. JLo didn't hold back, adding, but we have never met, we don't know each other, I think it's from word of mouth of things that have happened in the past. And number two is the first Ben of her breakup. It seems like Ben and Jen have different memories of why they called off their first wedding back in 2003. According to sources, Jen supposedly claimed that they didn't envision a future with compatible goals. As one source told Page Six, they were on very different paths at the end of it. Jennifer was ready to settle down and have kids, but Ben wasn't keen on giving up his bachelor lifestyle just yet. The source added, she got tired of waiting for him to come around even though it broke her heart to end the Things. However, did Ben feel the same way at the time? A leaked conversation that occurred after their split revealed that Ben despised the excessive media attention surrounding their wedding, which ultimately led to the initial postponement. He allegedly said, it's driving me crazy, everything is spiraling out of control. And finally, at number one, we have her diva behavior. Jen has been labeled a diva throughout her entire career, and it's a reputation that seems to have stuck with her in Hollywood. Reportedly, Jennifer refused to travel for a commercial that she agreed to do. For the commercial, she was going to be driving through the Bronx, the neighborhood where she grew up to show what inspired her. But she apparently refused to leave LA, forcing a body double to have to step in and do all the work to make the ad for her. Her demands when staying at hotels are also known to be way over the top. Apparently, during her stay at a London hotel, she insisted on a suite fit for royalty complete with roses, specific candies, freshly baked cookies, and plain M&Ms. Insiders who have encountered JLo as staff members have also come forward to share their experiences. For instance, while on a flight, Jen reportedly ignored a flight attendant asking her for her drink order and instead spoke through her personal assistant to relay her request. Without even looking at him, she turned to her personal assistant and said, please tell him I'd like a Diet Coke and Lime. Yikes. Despite numerous accounts from other celebrities and staff members recounting their encounters with Jen, she has consistently denied her diva persona. In an interview, she defended herself by saying, I got a moniker of being a diva, which I never felt I deserved. Going on to say, I've always been a hard worker, on time, doing what I'm supposed to do. Number 10, the second tape. Ray J's former manager came in hot a couple years ago, accusing Kim of lying about her second alleged sex tape. The original tape of Ray J and Kim was released in 2007, and many believe this was Kim's kickstart for her and her family's careers. But as so many years have gone by, you would think this drama would be more or less over. But you would be wrong. The former manager, WAC100, shared in a podcast in 2021 that he has a second, more graphic version of the tape. And after a suspected sneak peek was released of the teaser clip. He commented on a video of TMZ discussing it, saying, Now I'm confused. First, Kim's attorney said, I'm lying, this doesn't exist. Second, now Kim is saying she's blocking us and releasing it. So now I guess she's admitting she and her team have been lying. Kim had some thoughts about these accusations though. During a teaser clip for her new season of her reality show, she tells her attorney, Over my dead body is this happening again. I know the right attorneys this time and I'm not going to let this happen to me again. Going on to say, I have all the time, all the money, and all the resources to burn them all to the effing ground. Kim has never fully said there isn't a second tape, but her spokesperson told the press last year, Kim remains firm in her belief that there is no new second tape that exists. Going on to add, after 20 years, she truly wishes to move on from this chapter and focus instead on the positive things she continues to do as a mother, entrepreneur, and advocate for justice reform. Number 9, Her Natural Hair 
Is Kim's waist length hair really all natural? Many believe there's absolutely no way. After photos were shared on Kourtney Kardashian's Poosh Instagram account, internet critics believe she was lying about how natural her hair really is. The post was all about how to achieve natural hair growth, but many Instagram users just didn't buy it. Poosh posted three photos of Kim showing her long, healthy looking hair. The brand captioned the photos with, What all natural ingredient does Kim swear by for hair growth? We're sharing the secret to her luscious locks at the link in our bio. A few began believing that she could actually be wearing a wig for this photo shoot, and brought up how much damage she has done to her hair over the years, which wouldn't result in hair that looks so healthy like that. One social media user wrote, LOL, she's literally wearing a wig in this photo. Kim has been practically bald since the Met last year when she fried her hair with bleach. Another user joked by saying, I'm sure her extensions are human hair, so technically it is all natural. Gotta find those baby bar loopholes. Number 8. Northwest Parents embellishing their children isn't usually looked at too deeply, but did Kim go too far when talking about her daughter North? Kim shared a short video on Instagram with the caption, How sweet is North surprising me tonight with this for us to relax before the men? The clip showed a room lit by white candles and matching white roses with petals all over the floor, and balloon letters which spelled out the words, Carl Lagerfeld Met Gala, just above two massage beds. But fans were unsure that a 9 year old would think to do this pretty lavish situation. One Reddit user posted a screenshot of the story and said, there is no way North would do this. Another commented, why do adults lie? Even when they certainly don't have to, I don't get it. You have all the money, why still lie? One other Reddit user questioned how North would even go about doing this at all, and wrote, how would North even arrange that? What 9 year olds would call the front desk requesting massages, specific Met Gala balloons, white floral arrangements, and 30 candles? What do you guys think? Is this just another case of Kim getting caught in a lie? Number 7. The Bag Reveal Kim has claimed in the past her lashes are all natural, but after spotting some interesting products in her cosmetic bag, fans aren't so sure. Kim shared to her fans what's in her Chanel bag while she travels. She showed viewers brands like Neutrogena, Secret, and Latisse. While many were surprised she was using brands that are easily found at any local store, others believed they caught the star in another lie. Kim has shared before that she only ever uses a drop of mascara and that her eyelashes are completely natural, but Latisse is a product that helps with eyelash growth. One fan immediately called out the star and wrote, Kim's showing us she uses Latisse eyelash growth after claiming she doesn't. Not only that, but the social media users didn't believe that she actually uses drugstore products in her day to day life, considering just how wealthy she is. One user joked, Behold the bag of a billionaire, they're just like us. Number 6. The Dress The Marilyn Monroe dresses have been the root of a lot of controversy for Kim. We all know about the one she wore to the Met Gala, but what about the green sequin dress? Kim uploaded a series of photos last year that showed her in Marilyn's green dress while holding a Golden Globes award. Marilyn wore this dress during the Golden Globes back in 1962. Kim captioned her photos by saying, In my quest to find the Jean-Louis hand beaded dress that I wore to the gala, I discovered Heritage Auctions owned Marilyn's iconic green sequin dress. Going on to say, Further into my research, I found that the owner of the Golden Globe that she received that evening was none other than my friend Jeff Letham. In an interview with Vogue, she claimed to own three replicas of Marilyn's dresses. Claiming to have the green sequin dress, the Mr. President happy birthday dress, and another unnamed one. But this left users of the Marilyn Monroe fan page kind of confused. The fan page questioned Kim and wrote, Who is it that actually owns Marilyn's 1962 Golden Globes gown? First you say it was Julian's auctions, and then you updated your post to say it was Heritage's auctions. Another user begged for the star to stop claiming she could fit into these iconic dresses, and commented, Time to call off the charade. You couldn't fit into the JFK dress. Dress, which we now know and you couldn't fit into the Golden Globes dress. One other Marilyn Monroe fan worried about the dress, fearing it had been changed since it was owned by the star in the 60s, and wrote, The dress doesn't look the exact same. The back is different. Was it altered? After the backlash she received over wearing the dress, I can't imagine she will wear one of her dresses in the future, replica or not. Number 5. Photoshop 
Photoshop drama has followed Kim for ages as to if she does or doesn't use it. Though she has been caught in the act a few times, the recent post to promote her Skims bikini has outraged fans. She captioned the photo with, I just try on Skims, swim, and pray it doesn't rain forever in LA. The photo shows Kim posing in front of a mirror in her bathroom in the bikini, but internet critics have claimed that the whole thing looks pretty distorted. One user wrote, Am I the only one burnt out on Photoshop Kim? The amount of editing is absurd. Just post a regular pic, nobody cares you're in your 40s. Another added, I wonder if she realizes how badly her photos are photoshopped. One other fan even claimed it was so badly photoshopped that she looks like she's missing her middle finger on the hand holding the phone for the selfie. They commented, Why was this picture edited so much? Right side finger looks erased and the inner thighs on the left are pixelated due to trims. Number 4 Weight Loss Has Kim lied about her weight loss in the past? Before showing up to the Met in Marilyn's dress, Kim told fans that she had followed a strict diet, losing 16 pounds in order to fit into the gown. Kim showed her fans her body scan on her Instagram story, and of course it was analyzed pretty fast. Kim explained that a year ago her body fat percentage was at 25% and now it's 18.8%. But after it got reposted in a Kardashian Reddit board, people began noticing her live. A redditor wrote, according to this, Kim is 10 pounds lighter than she was last year. So much for that, I lost 16 pounds to fit into Marilyn's dress. Another user questioned Kim and wrote, Didn't she say she continued on her fat loss journey and lost about 20 plus pounds? Going on to say, It's just a never ending loop of lies with this family. Number three, the fillers. Last year, Kim was asked if she ever had filler or Botox. She responded by saying, I've had a little bit of Botox, but I've chilled actually. But no filler, I've never had filler in my cheeks, I've never filled my lips. But after downplaying her cosmetic procedures that fans believe she has had done, it's faced a bit of backlash. Even when Kim was pressed more about the details of filler or even eyelash extensions, she continued to deny and claimed her look was attainable. But it looks like the truth is really coming out now. Jessica DeFino, the beauty editor who used to work as an assistant editor for the Kardashians app, came forward to share the truth about the family. She tweeted, Remembering that time I was on a press trip with a lore editor and Kim's go-to cosmetic injector. The injector told us everything she's done to Kim's face off the record. Going on to say, obviously I understand the site can't publish that, but it shouldn't publish lies either. Jessica claimed that Kim was promoting the lie that anyone can look like a Kardashian. Jessica explained further her feelings on Allure publishing this reportedly false story, saying, The tone says this story is probably full of harmful lies, but we're going to let Kim have the final word, publish it, and profit from the clicks and affiliate sales anyways. Number 2. No Grays Do you believe Kim has ever had a gray hair in her life? During an appearance on Live with Kelly and Ryan, Kim claimed that she never found a gray hair on her head, ever. This all started when Ryan asked Kim how she keeps up with her platinum hair, trying to push to see how much work really goes into keeping up with bleaching your roots. Kim said at the time, When I dye my roots, it's going to take probably 8 hours, so I've been lazy. It's so much work. But after moving towards the topic of grays, Kim shared, I have not gone gray yet. I haven't had one gray hair yet. Isn't that weird? But according to an expert, this is highly unlikely. Madeline Preston told Cosmopolitan, The majority of women are bound to see a few gray hairs in their 30s, and by the age of 50, most would expect to have more than 50% of their scalp turn gray. Though of course it's different for everybody, Kim was caught in this lie. After fans went back and did some research, Kim actually shared that she got her first gray at 37, and she oddly enough shared this info on Live with Kelly and Ryan. During that time, she said how stressful it was coming to the defense of her then husband Kanye West when he was receiving so much backlash. She explained, I will say he gave me my first gray this week, and I'm blaming that on him. After being caught in this lie, one user wrote on social media, What a weird thing to lie about. I got my first grant like 24. Another added, is this an attempt at a flex? And at number one, we have the sleep schedule. Kim shared in her Instagram story her sleep report. She captioned the screenshot with, Great sleep score today. I finally got my heart rate down at night and my HRV up, and it feels so good. The photos showed that she scored a nearly 100% in readiness and landed at a 94% in sleep. The report said, Seems like you've been getting the right amount of sleep lately. In an interview not long before this post, Kim went through her morning routine. 
She revealed on a general day, I wake up at 5.45 a.m. for my workout at 6, and I'll pick up my workout clothes the night before. Going on to say, I keep it basic and pretty much wear the same thing all the time, and then I work out for an hour. But after this, fans took a little look into her sleep report, and they had some questions about how legit her early morning workout really was. One user wrote, Kim always says she wakes up at around 4 or 5 to work out, but every time she posts these things, she actually wakes up way later. What is the truth, Kimberly? Another added, she's lying, and these aren't actually her screenshots, but what the company tells her to post. One fan even questioned the star, writing, who the heck sleeps for 9 hours with 4 kids? Number 10, Taylor Swift. Taylor and Haley's drama really came to light only recently. The social media drama happened when a video resurfaced, showing Haley with the rapper Method Man during an episode of Drop the Mic. In the clip, Haley was seen rolling her eyes and sticking her tongue out when Method Man said, Hollywood's top star face off in a one on one battle, full of the meanest lyrics about a celebrity since Taylor Swift's last album. The video even made it to Selena Gomez's For You page, unfortunately for Haley. Selena quickly came to defend her friend Taylor and commented, So sorry, my best friend is and continues to be one of the best in the game. We all know how close Taylor and Selena are, so of course this isn't going to help Haley in her case of not looking like a mean girl. Selena even said when talking about Taylor, I never fit in with the cool girls that were celebrities. My only friend in the industry really is Taylor, so I remember feeling like I didn't belong. This left fans wondering if there was maybe more bad blood before before this to have led to the gagging over Taylor. Though the two were never necessarily close, it doesn't seem like there is any hatred beforehand. Haley even ended up sharing positive feedback online about the film Cats, which Taylor did star in, saying, My Christmas gift from the universe is the release of the Cats movie. Rumors have also been surfacing as to if this could be an extension of the feud between Taylor and Justin Bieber. Not only from the history between Justin and her best friend Selena, but also because he is close with his manager Scooter Braun, who was the man that bought all of her music catalog and who she claims bullied her alongside Justin. Some social media users speculate that since Haley has never said anything about this since, even with all the allegations, that there may be some truth behind it. Number 9, Justin being toxic. Is Haley lying about the fact that maybe Justin isn't as good of a husband as she tries to make him out to be? In a video that has been circulating social media, it shows Justin basically embarrassing Haley in front of the paparazzi and fans. The couple were headed out to lunch at a cafe in West Hollywood when he looked to forget his wife in the car. He gets out of the car and basically slams the door in her face and walks the wrong way. Haley then gets out, looking not too happy, and appearing to tell him that the restaurant is the other way. This whole thing is awkward on both parts, I have to say. One fan debunked the theory that it was a mistake, saying, Even if she thought she was coming out the other side, which wouldn't make sense since it's facing the road with cars, he could have still waited and went in with her. A few others wondered if this could just be a fight that the paparazzi caught on camera. But either way, it definitely looked looks like there may be something more going on. Not only that, but Justin ditched his wife in another viral clip. Justin is seen to be escorted to an opening in a barrier where he was surrounded by paparazzi, then he leaves his wife completely in the dust and skateboards down the street. Haley then goes to the opening, trips, and then chases after him down the street. This is definitely a moment that looks bad on Justin. One TikTok user commented on the video saying, he doesn't want you, he's running away from the paparazzi and you. The video concerned a few more fans who were unsure why Justin would just leave her like that. With one asking, does he hate you or something? Number eight, we have Road Beauty. Hailey Bieber found herself in some pretty hot water after being sued by a brand, which accused her of trying to buy their name Road from four years ago. When the model launched her skincare brand, she named it Road, which is also the name of a fashion brand, resulting in her getting hit with a trademark infringement lawsuit. The owners of Road Fashion Line came out with a statement saying, Today we are forced to file a lawsuit against Hailey and her new skincare line that was launched last week that is using the brand Road. They went on to say, we didn't want to file this lawsuit, but we had to in order to protect our business. Even though the founders stressed how they loved Haley and wished her success, they were upset that she chose this name out of all other choices. They went on to say, Haley could choose any brand for her skincare line. We only have the brand name Road that we've built. That's why we didn't sell out our brand when she asked for it years ago. The nine-year-old Road Fashion was nervous about confusion on the market. When asked why the decided to go through with this lawsuit, they revealed, we have real concerns for the future. It's disappointing to me that a female entrepreneur, of whom we've been fans of for a long time, is trying to smother what we've built. It was revealed though that Haley owns the trademark for skincare, and 
they own it for fashion. So it looks like she's in the clear. Though Haley hasn't necessarily lied about doing this, she hasn't really been open about the damage that she's done either. Number seven, copying outfits. Something Haley will never admit to is copying Selena's past outfits, but it looks like she definitely found some inspiration for her closet from Selena's. One instance that was spotted was when Selena was caught wearing a gray Balenciaga turtleneck sweatshirt with black jeans, and not long after that, Haley was caught wearing the exact same outfit. While performing an event, Selena took the stage in a white mini dress with white sneakers and high white socks. Around the same time, Haley ended up wearing a dress that looked pretty similar. Since this was during Selena's blonde hair phase, it made the similarities even that more real. Another fan noted a time when Selena stepped out of the red carpet in a black cutout dress with a low neckline. Later on, Haley was seen in a similar cutout black dress for another red carpet event. TikTok users have shared how many more times this has actually happened and have made various compilation videos in order to prove the point. I mean, if I were Haley, there would be no way I'd admit to this one either. Number six, we have Persuaded. This is something she has actually admitted to, but is there a chance that she could be feeling this way a bit more than she's letting on with Justin? During an episode of In Good Faith, the podcast, Haley revealed how it was her mom who persuaded her to stay with Justin. She shared at the time, I remember I called a few different times. One particular time when we were in Brooklyn and I was calling her, I was crying and I was like, I can't do it. There's no way that I'm going to be able to do this if it's going to be like this forever. She went on to say when discussing her mom's response, she was so calm and she was like, it's going to pass and you're going to be fine and he's going to be healthy. Though she didn't end up staying with Justin and luckily he has been able to overcome some of his mental health struggles, could it be that her mom is more involved in keeping this relationship intact than Haley is letting on? Number five, damage control. Was Haley's interview with Call Her Daddy actually just a way to do damage control before Selena's documentary came out? Haley decided she wanted to tell the truth about the rumors about her husband cheating on Selena with her, but it looks like she might have just been saving herself because of the accusations that would come out in the film. In the interview, where Haley is asked, how is it being married to someone with that level of fame impacted your identity? To which Haley answered by saying, where do I start? The interviewer goes on to ask, your husband was in a very public relationship. Were you ever with Justin romantically at the same time as her? Haley responded by saying, a lot of the hate comes from, oh, you stole him. It's about people knowing the truth because there is a truth. Going on to say that there was absolutely no overlap between the two women. After this interview came out, fans began commenting on their speculations. One user wrote, of course Haley is trying to clear their reputation before Selena's documentary. Another added, I find it amusing how they are trying to make themselves look better right before Selena releases My Mind and Me, and finally spills the truth. Number four, mean friends. Haley has always shared her love for her friends publicly, but maybe they're just a little bit meaner than that. Von Ford is a celebrity stylist who has been linked to being pretty close with Haley in the past and has let his opinions be known about Selena during the drama. Vaughn posted a story that wrote, I hate Selena. Fans were speculating as to why he was getting involved and why he was coming in so hot with his opinion. Many were left wondering if Haley was really saying bad things about Selena behind the scenes. He then shared a screenshot of his post that was taken down due to harassment and wrote, I said what I said. Since this post, the stylist has been forced to take his account private. When fans saw that it was a friend of Haley's that was publicly bullying Selena, one commented, it's always Haley's friends. And another added, you can tell that all they do is talk about Selena. Selena. These people have issues and are so pressed over her that hate is real. Number three, we have rebound. Do you think Haley could have just been a rebound or was she used to make Selena jealous? Haley and Justin got married just months after the official split from Selena. In March of 2018, a source came forward and said they weren't getting along and decided to take a break. Doesn't seem like a big deal and they'll probably be fine again soon. Did Justin take this break just a little bit more seriously than Selena though, considering by June of the same year, he was with Haley. A source close to Justin claims that he still continued to tell Selena, I love you, right up until the day he got married, maybe hoping for another chance with his ex. Fans are taking to their social media to explain their theories and what they think is going on between the couple. After Haley posted a photo on Justin's 29th birthday saying, words couldn't possibly sum up all that you embody. One user commented, he looks like he's being held hostage. Sometimes divorce is the best solution. She's definitely a rebound. When Selena and Justin were in their on again, off again phase, fan theories came out that Haley was being used just to make Selena jealous during their off phase. In December 2017, a source close to Justin told TMZ that while getting back with Selena, he reached out to Haley to apologize for mistreating her in the past, saying this contact was purely in the spirit of living more openly and honestly within the church. And according to the source, this caused Selena to get pretty upset at the time, of course. Number two, a Nepo baby. Haley has publicly referred to herself as a Nepo baby, and I'm 
sure we all remember the shirt incident, but is she even a Nepo baby at all? After Haley began embracing the title, it started to cause a bit of controversy on social media. The model definitely has some high profile relatives such as her dad Stephen Baldwin and of course her husband. But after the shirt moment went viral, Twitter users had split opinions. People began arguing if she even really qualifies as a Nepo baby at all. One user wrote, that post paparazzi photo of Hailey Bieber in her Nepo baby shirt is so corny I'm embarrassed. Another added, Hailey is the last person I think of when Nepo baby comes to mind. And at number one, we have not ready for marriage. Hailey and Justin may have actually been way less ready to get married in the beginning. Justin has revealed in the past how he struggled after getting married to Hailey. He shared, it's a journey. I remember when I first got married, I hit a bit of an emotional breakdown because I thought marriage was going to fix all my problems and it didn't. Allegedly, the two actually got married on a whim. Their quick engagement may have also had a quick wedding. A source close to the star claims that about two months after the couple got engaged, they secretly tied the knot. TMZ obtained photos of Justin and Haley at a New York courthouse which provides marriage licenses. After he allegedly thanks the court for keeping it on the DL, he appears to cry, telling Haley how excited he is to marry her. Speculations began surfacing about how Haley perhaps forced this quick marriage. She's made it clear in past interviews that she wasn't getting any younger. She says, my sister was 24 when she got married and my parents also got married when they were young too. I see no reason to wait. When you know it's right, it's right. But with them both being pretty open about the extreme ups and downs of their marriage, maybe they should have waited just a little bit longer.